Thank you, Lord. Another day. Mm. Hey, happy Veterans Day, first of all, to all the veterans out there. We'd like to say happy Veterans Day for all the veterans. And also in Canada, they call it Remembrance Day. They call it Remembrance Day in Canada. So in the United States, it's Memorial Day, Veterans Day. Today is Veterans Day in the United States. Veterans Day in the United States and in Canada is called Remembrance Day in Canada by my Canadians. So thank you so much for joining the call today. First of all, I'd like to take a, a, just a moment out of silence to honor all the veterans uh, in the world and in the United States, Canada and around the globe. So let's take a moment of silence for all our veterans. All right, thank you so much for your respect for all the fallen veterans. Uh, today is Veterans Day in the United States and in Canada, in Canadian terms, it's called Remembrance Day in Canada. So thank you so much for your respect for that. And thank you so much for the people that went forward to fight to keep our day, that we have freedom in America still, <laughs> Woo. and uh, in Canada and around the world. So thank you so much with our fallen heroes, uh, respectively all the wars. All right, first of all, I'd say good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Veterans Day. Mr. Natasha Ismail, Regional Director out of Fresno. Good morning, I'll see you on Friday. Friday, I'm doing a leadership in Fresno, California with RDs and higher and people with 100 points. So if you're not there, get there as quick as possible. I'd like to also get, say good morning to Mr. Bree Clements, my co-host for putting these together. Can we give him a hand? He's always behind the scenes, making me look like I'm doing a great job, a fabulous job, but trust me, it's all his work. Trust me. You got to see that's a leader. You got to give respect. Respect is due. And he's done without him. I couldn't do this. So I want to thank him again publicly because I can't thank him enough always because it, it is what it is. Miss Joyce Brewer. Good morning. Miss Pat Robinson. Good morning. there in Oakland, California. You're trying to match me, young lady. Look at you. Uh-huh. Miss Belinda Batiste out in Ohio. Good morning. Miss Caroline Baker. Good morning. Mr. Dale Ranson in Nashville. Good morning. Mr. Marvin Carter, regional director. I'll see you Friday in Fresno, sir. Miss Sensational in Florida, where is she at? Let's see what kind of glasses she got on today. Where is she at? I got to find her. I got to find her. I got to. There, oh, there she is, those black frame glasses. That girl got so many glasses. We thought Mr. Nelson had a lot of glasses. Mr. Bill Bailey, good morning, sir. Uh, Miss Marie down in San Diego, good morning, good morning. Miss Jones from Crew out in South Carolina. That lady is so faithful on every call. She's always on there. I don't know what's happening with the rest of South Carolina group, but she's always here. I love it. Mr. Payon out in Japan, good morning, sir. Or should I say good evening for you out in Japan? Oh, that's right, it's midnight in Japan. That's right, it's midnight in Japan. Mr. Jeffrey Sweeney, good morning, sir. Uh, Mr. Julian Lewis, Regional Director out of South, out of San Diego, California. Did he do a phenomenal job yesterday? My God, he was, whoo, man, Lord have mercy, huh? And then on Monday, Miss Nat Natasha Ismail killed, I mean, the quality of these speakers are just coming up in their game. I love it. Uh, Mr. Zoe Bowie, uh, Zoe, Zoe Duffy, I'm sorry, part of the Baker organization. Look at Mr. Baker's group. You got a lot of them on here today. I don't know what he told them, but they're popping up on here. Lord have mercy. Miss Miss Carter, part of the Baker group. First time I've seen her on her. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Miss Tracy Gilmore, good morning. Uh-oh, what happened here? Good morning, Miss Tracy Gilmore, part of the Bakery organization. Miss Candy Eppley down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Marcia Carter. Down in Fresno, California, Miss Eileen Duffy. Wow, part of the bakery group. A new one on the call for Mr. Baker's organization. Look at him. Look at his group just tan it up. That, uh huh. Uh, Mr. Freddie Sherman, good morning, sir. Uh, Miss Silly out in Woodland, California. Thank you so much. Mr. Harrison Mill, I think we'll see you Friday because I know he's a few points out from 100. Uh, Natasha Park in Nashville uh, in Las Vegas. Good morning, dear. Natalie, good morning. Uh, Miss Alexander in Fresno, California, good morning. Mr. Ryan Swallow just jumped on from the bakery organization up in up in Sacramento, California. Let's head down to Sandy, uh, let's head down to Dallas, Texas, the good old Fred, uh, uh, <laughs> Sam Foster, part of the organization with TD Jakes. Thank you so much, sir. That's my friend. Miss Walker, good morning. Miss Eileen in San Diego, good morning. Miss Mary Perez, good morning. Mr. Robinson, part of the bakery organization, good morning. 
T Miss T Hayes, good morning, dear. Mr. Winston Herbert, good seeing you again. Uh, Barbara Peterson Marks, good morning, first timer. Mr. Brian Baker, regional director. My God, look at all your people out here today. So I don't know what you did, but keep it up. Miss Pat and Frank uh, Bowman up in Elk Grove, California. It's good seeing you guys this morning. Miss Jill Murphy over in Chicago. Thank you for joining the call this morning. Uh, Miss Soro uh, Martinez in Iowa. Good morning, dears. Good seeing you on the call. Mr. Al Randolph, you always get home right at the time we start, Mr. Al Randolph. Get on a little earlier. <laughs> Mr. Barry Shelton in Houston, Texas. Good morning, dear. Uh, Miss Evelyn Phibbs over in Fresno, California. Good morning, young lady. What a wonderful job you did on your calls as well. Miss Gail Wiggins, we thank you so much. Mr. Curtis Evans, oh, regional director out of South Carolina. Oh my God, there we go. All right, those are the ones that I saw that got on here early. Hey everybody, we've got a great call lined up as you well know. And I'm excited because this young man is a philosopher of, 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 of words when it comes to helping people understand the true meaning of who they are and what they mean to this world. Is that a good way of saying it? He lives in Houston, Texas. He told us he's 56 years old, business owner, and also he worked in corporate America for a good part of his life. He's been married to the same beautiful, charming, lovely, beautiful wife of 34 plus years, 34 years. Uh, and he's, his quote that I really hold on to, he said this, and I never forget, he said, it's a great time to be an AC and is right now, but more important, what are you going to do with it? I'll say that again. They might want to write that down. That's a quote from him. See, I, even see, I take all kinds of notes. He said, the greatest time to be an AC and is right now. He's also said this, Mr. Dale Ranson, but what are you going to do with it? That's right, Marie. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? He says, always you must be reinventing yourself, especially this year. If not, you're going to get left behind. Wow. He also said something very powerful. He said, faith is the key. Wow. Pain of change versus progress. Change is painful, but progress is successful. I'll say it again. Pain is pain of change versus progress change is painful yes it is because we all had to learn how to pivot this year didn't we but progress is successful so i want to thank him for all his insight uh he's a great leader i just love him to the bottom of my heart we have a lot of great philosophical conversation about acn and about life and about investing without further ado my friend from houston texas the one the only couple the mr dwight williams can we all give him a hand dwight williams good morning everybody good morning good morning First, before I get started, uh, I just want to say thank you, Mr. Thomas. I just want to say thank you. Uh, I love to talk and uh, I spend most of my time mentoring. And um, so, but I mean, like you said earlier, I mean, yourself, just starting with you alone. Uh, it's, uh, I, don't, I, I have to ask myself, and I've said this before, why am I even here? The, uh, and then you've got uh, Mr. Lewis and you've got Mrs. Mel. And you've got your Mr. Clemens. And so you've got leaders on and Ms. Driscoll, you got you've got leaders on here that that I mean, if you're trying to achieve anything, you, there's enough knowledge on this call alone to where there are no limits to achieving whatever you want to achieve. So I want to give it up for uh, Mr. Thomas for just just giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys and thinking enough of me to even do it. And so I really appreciate that. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, for more than anything, your leadership. I mean, th that is what leadership is. Leadership is sacrifice. It's humility. It's all of those things. And because he's a, he's a world-class leader within himself. And so he could do most of this <laughs> with his eyes closed. So, uh, so uh, I just want to, I want to open up and say that. And, uh, and just to get started, uh, I was, uh, I was, I was thinking, I don't know if you noticed that the uh, people have been, I've been on a lot of Zoom calls and people make fun of me. And so uh, uh, I'm gonna tell you uh, the uh, I, I I dress I fully dress up uh, I, I I tell you I got I put the jeans on and the belt and I, I put I pretty much put everything on when I when I get on a call because you, you I don't know if you've seen all these Zoom commercials with people slipping up <laughs> my wife walking in and catch me off guard I'm running around. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm just real careful. Uh, so I, I always dress fully <laughs> when I'm uh, doing a presentation. I just wanted to have a little fun, but uh, because uh, this Zoom thing is new, is real, and so I don't want any uncomfortable uh, uh, 
situations popping up. So I dress up, I get ready, I put on everything. So um, uh, we talked last week, I, yeah, I told you my favorite word is faith, it is. And, and I open up and I start off all the time and I, I'm very clear, um, I use the Bible for my decision-making. Now, uh, and, and briefly, I'll tell you why. Uh, I, um, I, I was talking to my, I, I spoke to my church a few weeks ago and I told them that I grew up in the church and I always heard a scripture that said uh, uh, there would become, there would come a day when we would, we wouldn't, uh, we believe a lie over the truth. And you know, you have a vision in your mind and you think, oh, wow, that's coming. You're a kid. I was a kid in Sunday school and, and what, listening to all, never to believe that it would come this way. All the misinformation and all the stuff that we're surrounded by, we don't know what to believe today. And so for me, I, I have to be very careful that I, the things that I believe, I, I recently, my, my, th this is the holiday season. My daughter will be back in town, my son will be here and the family will be spending time together. And um, my plan for the end of the year, one of the conversations I'm gonna have with, with my family is I'm gonna be very clear about what do you believe? I want to know very clearly what you believe. And I'm gonna ask each one of them that. And can they articulate they, their beliefs? Because, uh, and, and I'm gonna ask, where do you think that belief came from? And why do you believe that? And those things, and because it's important that you know, because if you don't know, then that means in, in most cases, somebody is creating your beliefs for you. Uh, and, uh, and you can't afford that today. And because there's a lot of noise, isn't it? There, there, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of noise out here. There's a there's a lot of messaging. And so we say in network marketing, Mr. Thomas, what do we say? A confused person does what? Nothing. And so noise produces confusion. Confusion produces paralysis. Paralysis results in no activity, no progress. And so that's what you'll see. And so what happens is these things cause us to lose focus. And so, and, and, and we get distracted because we got all these things and, and you're doing this one day and the next day, I, I, I would tell people uh, that I'd be mentoring young people and they, they wake up two days in a row and I look at the temperature on the day was the same, the breeze on the day, the beautiful days, no, 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 uh, no clouds in the sky, two beautiful days. They wake up one day just motivated. They wake up the next day in, a, in, in pure depression. And I asked them, you know, what's the difference? There's no difference in the day. It's just how I woke up. And so if we live by the mood swings and we make our decisions by those influences, we would tend to like it, like uh, my my favorite book says, like a sh like a ship on the sea with no uh, rudder. It has no ability to control its direction. So wherever the waves toss me is where I'll end up being. However, I feel that morning when I wake up will determine the results of my day. So we have to take control of our lives. Uh, we have to live on purpose. And so uh, this is another reason why. The Bible is my favorite book. I think every book, I read a lot of books. I'm reading two or three books right now. And, uh, and but most of the principles that I pull out of those books come from truths in the Bible. And that was the other thing. The, uh, the book, uh, the Bible talks about building a house and it talks about building a house on rocks and building houses on sand. And so when we build our house on things that we don't know to be truths, it's like building a house on sand. And when the, when, the, when the wave comes in and washes away our foundation, our house comes apart. And that's what happens, you will see in people's lives when their, house, they, they, their, 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 their belief system shift because what I believe today or yesterday or last week or last month or last year changes over time. And so it changes. Um, um, uh, it, those beliefs, remember, what I do is a product of what I think. What I think is a product of what I believe. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to, I'm, so I told you last week, I talked about fear. Faith is the foundation of everything we're going to talk about, my, my Fs. So fear was last week. This week, I'm going to start off with failure, but my target for this week is focus. So <clears throat> I want to briefly discuss failure because I don't believe in failure. I, 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 don't, I don't believe we were. And so I ask uh, a series of questions, crazy questions. First question is, do you believe life was created for you or against you? This is really a simple 
It was created for you. So if life was created for you, uh, then that means that, and the reason I know that that's true, once again, I go back to my book, uh, the Bible, and it says that I have given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I already gave you, it gave it all. So I would, I would constantly ask myself when I read that scripture, I'd say, uh, how could that possibly be true? Because I don't have all the stuff that I believe I want. <laughs> so, so I would ask myself, well, then why don't I have the things that I believe I want? If you already gave them to me, <laughs> why don't I have them? And so the, the, there is an obvious answer to that question. Doesn't have anything to do with him. He said, I already did it. I see people doing things to get things or to make things happen. We don't have to make anything happen because it's already done. But you have to believe that. And so, so the question is, what is my, what is my role in all of this? Uh, you know, if SVP, if he's already, so you, are you saying to me, Mr. Dwight, that SVP is already done? Absolutely. If, if, if SVP, he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And this SVP is a desire and he's already done it then why don't you have it? <laughs> this is a crucial little question. I used to ask myself this question all the time. My, uh, uh, once again, this book says that the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. So the steps toward the things that he's already done for me have already been ordered by me. So then if that's the question. Then if the steps, there's only two things that can stop me from having the things. Time, I just haven't gotten there yet, or faith. I haven't believed to take the steps to get there. Now, here's another thing. Though. Here's the real killer. Because if we take those two and package those two and slide them to the side, then we talk about doubt, fear, and unbelief. See, there are steps as well. And those steps lead us in a different direction. They lead us away from the things that we believe we desire that he has for us. So those steps lead in a different direction. So because we, if we have unbelief, if I say I want to be an SVP, but I don't actually believe I can do it, I'm going to take a series of steps that are going to be counterproductive to the thing I say I want. Just remember that. you got to know that. And so uh, I'm going to self-sabotage. So the, my biggest challenge in life is not outside of me, my mother loves to say this. It is, I am my greatest in the me. It's in me. I am my greatest enemy. Because I'm the person that makes the decisions. I, yes, temptations come from outside of me, but the choices, I make them. And I don't have to make those choices. I choose to make those choices. And if those choices tend to be counterproductive to the things that I believe I'm supposed to have and that he says he's already given me, then the reason I don't have them is me. I don't have the things I desire because of me. Now, you may write this down and think this is a profound statement, but it is not. It is, it is simply another version of a statement Mr. Thomas has probably made a million times in various variations. Um, you got to get up. You got to get it done. Uh, how many calls have you made? Uh, how many people have you touched? Uh, what did you do today? Have you tracked your numbers? These are the same statements. Yep, get her done. That's it. And, and so this is not anything profound. It's just another um, another expression of the same message. So <clears throat> we're gonna dig in uh, again. So what is failure? So we say failure is not accomplishing my goal. Failure is no, 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 no. Failure is none of those things. I'm going to show you how you cannot fail. Um, uh, there is no failure. The only way to fail is to quit, is to quit trying, is to quit learning, is to quit. If the only way, there is only one way to fail, and that is to quit. If you choose not to quit, 
you cannot fail. Now you will say, well, now this is where I disagree. <laughs> you gotta know that I've already had these conversations with myself. <laughs> so you gotta understand that. I've already asked myself all of these questions. He said that nothing is impossible to a person that believes. Now you either believe that's true or you don't. So if he says that nothing is impossible to a person that believes, and if I say I believe, then I can achieve whatever I desire. You either believe it or you don't. I choose to believe it because I believe it's true. I believe that the things that I have, the desires that I have, I think they come from him. I think that some of my desires, although they may be selfish, as my faith develops, they will change. I think there are, sometimes my desires are cloudy and I may not clearly see them, but as my faith grows and as I move in certain directions, those things become clearer. And as they become clearer, my desires may adapt and become closer to his desires for me. But no matter what, if I quit and stop making progress, I will not move toward. I'll tell you a story. When I started my career at 19 years old, one of my 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 uh, one of the people that I admired was Bill Gates. I mean, I admired him because he was a technician. He was like me as a programmer, and he's one of the best in his company. He made a million dollars before he turned 25, and I was on track to do the same. I was on track to actually beat him. Now, as a kid out the hood, nobody would have ever known or, or I could have ever known. And, and my interest changed. I came home uh, from traveling and, I, I, and, and I, I don't know if you, I mentioned this a, a few times. I had, free, I had made, I had achieved so many things in, in understanding the discipline around money that I could set a number in a year and make it every every time. I could say, I'm gonna double next year, I'm gonna quadruple next year. And every year I'd hit that goal, I'd beat the goal. And so once you figure out those things, you, you start setting these massive, just crazy goals. And so my goal was, I'm gonna hit a million before Bill Gates. It was a meaningless goal, it would have meant nothing. But it was a goal, Don't, nevertheless, but it was a goal and it kept me focused. But something happened in that year because I was mentoring other people and bringing them along. And I brought my first group of five people along and I eventually hired them all and changed their lives. One of the individuals is a free gentleman today. His daughter, one daughter is a doctor, his other daughter is a nurse. And uh, this was a kid that was, hadn't finished high school and I, it hadn't, it hadn't gone to college when I met him, trained him changed his life. My brother went from making five to six figures in two weeks. And it's not about the money. It's about of invest. It's really about like Mr. Thomas It's investing yourself in other people's lives. Um, and, and so uh, that, that decision changed my trajectory. And it's what I said to you earlier. Yes, I was moving in that direction toward that goal. God wasn't mad at me for trying to beat Bill Gates to a million dollars, but it was not an important goal to him. And along, the, along that path, as I was moving on that path, he changed my trajectory. I moved away from caring about the amount of money I made to caring about the number of lives I could impact. That became the priority for me. And uh, still made, uh, still was very successful financially, but my motivation was people, uh, just like Mr. Thomas. And so, um, and so I don't get concerned when I, when I meet with young people and they say, man, I, I want to make my first million. I ain't mad at them. Let's, let's, let's do that. Because the rest of that, God, as, as I draw that person closer to his faith, his, his goals and objectives and interests will change, typically tend to change. So, uh, I wanted to. I, I want to stress with failure that there is no failure uh, in, in in for us. We were not designed to fail. We were designed to 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 dominate life. Everything in life, other than another person, is subject to us. And so when I when I see individuals and challenged and struggling, I realize it simply, all it means is that you have not overcome your greatest enemy, which is you. And you have to spend your time conquering yourself. What does that mean? Uh, 
one of the authors in the, my favorite book, the Bible, one of the greatest authors is Paul. And Paul says that I buffet myself daily. Now, what does he mean by that? I make my body know that I am always in control because if you don't, the body has certain instincts in it. It, it. it uses instincts to eat. It uses instincts for sex. It uses instincts for hunger, thirst, all of that. And comfort is one of those things that if you're careful, the bottom body seeks to comfort itself. It seeks safety. It seeks survival instinct, all of these things. But in some cases, these things can become counter to our progress. Sleep, comfort, all of these things. Because now my goal is big, but my body is saying, hey, man, we good. Everything's good. We got plenty of money. We got food in the fridge. We got, but I haven't achieved my goal. So now your goal is at, at in conflict with the instincts in your body. And you've got to make, you have to, and Paul says, I make my body always know that I'm in control. So I wake it up early. I, I don't feed it every day. I, I don't give it everything that it wants. Why? Because it's got to know that it's subject to me. Otherwise, if not, if I'm not careful, I'll be subject to it. And so I tell young people that get lost and uh, that, 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 that say, now, I don't know why. I, when I go to juvenile, I say, well, what happens is you have given in to your instincts. Your body is telling you what to do. So now you have become subject to it instead of it becoming being subject to you. And that's what ends up happening when we don't, and here's the word, when we lack discipline, when we don't know to discipline ourselves, when we cannot tell, this is one of the litmus tests for me when I'm mentoring somebody, I will listen to people set goals. And I'll, 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 I go through multiple stages of goal setting. The first set of goals, I let them set whatever goal they want. And I kick back and I said, when we're going to get this goal done? A week, two weeks, uh, 30 days. That's fine. I don't say anything to them. And so 30 days later, a week later, two weeks later, I remind them where are we with our goal? Uh, which goal? They've forgotten in many cases what the goal was. And in most cases, they have not achieved that goal. Now, why did I do that? Because I need you to understand, if you cannot discipline and tell yourself what to do, you are not gonna lead a team of a thousand people ever because you can't lead you. How are you gonna lead a thousand people when you can't lead yourself? So the next thing I do is I say, okay, let's try something different. Let's set a small goal and let's get that done. And I continue to set those small goals until they get one done. Why? Because they need the sense of accomplishment before we can take the next step. And these are the steps that we take to achieving things and getting, getting stuff done. There is no failure. The only way to fail is to quit. And often we quit on ourselves. Now, I wanted to knock that out because I wanted fear to be combined somehow with uh, failure. Uh, were we able to get the video clip by any chance? We're up. Can we play that real quick? It's a short clip and we're gonna talk about that next and I'll try to do that briefly, all right? Oh, whoa, whoa, pump the brakes. We're already at 1130. Uh, you're sure? Okay, then let's do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Go, 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 yes. At the end of the day, this is a game of focus. Very clever. All right, now, attention is like a spotlight. And our job is to dance in the darkness. I didn't even feel you take that. The human brain is slow <laughs> and it cannot multitask. Jesus, when? Human behavior is very predictable. I touch you here, I steal from here. I tap you here, I steal from here. I step to here, you're not gonna slap my face, are you? Why? You would if you knew where my hand was. Okay, I get it, I get it. You get their focus, you take whatever you want. All right, one of my favorite clips, uh, love that clip. Uh, I use it, I've used it in my Sunday school class, I've used it everywhere. Uh, I use it in Bible study, uh, why? Um, uh, and we're gonna talk briefly and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. My favorite book again says, 
that the thief, notice it calls my, my outside adversary, the thief. Notice what he calls him. He calls him a thief. And he says the thief comes for three reasons, to steal, kill, and to destroy. He steals from me. He kills, tries to kill me, and he destroys things in my life. And how does he do it? He calls him a thief because the greatest technique he uses is deception or misdirection. Now, I told you when I opened up, lots of noise. Focus is crucial for you to live a successful life. And uh, yes, millennials, I say this all the time. You live in the greatest time the planet has ever seen. You heard me say that before. But you also live in the most challenging time the planet has ever seen. See, because opportunity is often going to be uh, accompanied by challenge. It's just they naturally balance each other out. Now, this is why, this is how life balances success versus failure. Because the greater the opportunity, the greater the challenges to achieve it. Uh, why? Because uh, they just naturally, uh, they, for us to get into that conversation would be a little bit more than I want to do right now. So he, l l let me not, let's not have that conversation, but just know that the, the opportunities are always going to be accompanied by a challenge. And as opportunities grow, challenges will grow in accompaniment with them. So you live in a challenging time. You live in a time full of noise noise everywhere man and if you're not careful noise will capture your attention um and you'll miss the we talk about the greatest shift in wealth ever known you know i don't know if you know that greatest shift in wealth that the world has seen is happening right now while the world is talking about politics social injustice now i'm not suggesting these are not things to be talked about but don't talk, don't allow them to cause you to be misdirected. That's my point. My point is not for you to be aware. You should always be both educated and aware. But what I'm making sure you don't do is allow yourself to become so captivated by the noise that the thief can steal from you. So that's my point to us is we have to sustain focus. So. Uh, a little task, I told you earlier, we talked earlier. Um, these are the things that make all the difference. Th what we do is simple. Right now, many of us go to jobs that were designed by people for their success. They have paid attention to much detail to ensure that they can put mechanisms in place that you have been plugged into to achieve their goals, okay? Whether you're a secretary, an accountant, attorney, uh, administrator, whatever role you may be playing, nurse, um, uh, doctor, you, you, if you're playing that role plugged into another institution, all they've done is what you can do. They have built systems and, and accommodated functions that to uh, fulfill their goal. They have focused on achieving the thing that they need, they have desired to get done. Now, many of us focus on achieve, helping them achieve their focus. So, so often that focus has become our primary focus. Uh, but what has happened is we, we have now been misdirected away from our focus. And so the thing that we desire has lost focus. And so the challenge that we face when, when dealing with this is how do I get back? to focusing on my goals. And this is what the meetings that Mr. Thomas does every day. That's what they do. This is what the little goals. Let me touch five people every day. Not 50, not 100. Let's start off with two. You would say, well, two, but two's not enough. Well, none is even worse if you're not doing any right now. So if you're not doing any right now, two is a lot better than that. Matter of fact, 202 is a 200% improvement <laughs> over, over your current production. And so five is a 250% product over the two. And 10 
is a 200% production over the five, increasing production. And it is as simple as that. But we say, but I, I, I need to do it fast. You're not doing it at all right now. So, hey, let's go with two. Matter of fact, let's just go with one. <laughs> one is even 100%. You can't do a nine. And so, I, I, and I'm being very, I'm, I'm not trying to, I, I promise you, I'm not trying to slap or hit you. I don't believe in that. What I'm really trying to do is help you to see how simple it is. It's really easy. And the person that you may be working for or working with, that's all he's done. And what he's done, you can do the same, the very same thing. And you can create a level of success in most cases that even that person that you're working for or with has not yet achieved. No overhead, freedom. People that you're not work that are not working for you. So they're they're independent because they're working with you. Each one chasing their own goals and dreams. And they're thankful because you've created a platform for them to, to achieve their success, not your success, not your goals, but you've created a platform that you guys work in co, you co-work together in achieving your goals. So I'm gonna stop there. Make sure we stay as focused as we possibly can. Do not lose focus because then that's when the thief can steal from you. All right, guys, if you don't have questions or comments, we're done. I turn it back over to you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Wow. Let me, hold on, let me write that. I'm still writing here, sir. Hold on one second. Stay focused. 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 Any questions for Mr. Dwight Williams? Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. No questions in the chat or take your phone off mute. Question for Mr. Williams. I this is this is dope right here. Stay focused. Stay focused. I don't care. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, but stay focused. I know the job got you caught, but stay focused. Yeah, I know you've been there 10 years, but stay focused. What you gonna do if they let you go? Stay focused on your business. Like he says, they're trying to get you focused on their business when you should be focused on your business. Lord have mercy. That right there was that right there was worth, I mean, my God. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. My God, so many, some of you have never been on this call, but you know what? Today, he told you what you need to do from here out. Stay focused. Love the video. Thank you so much. Stay focused. Thank you. Stay sir. focused. Mr. Thomas? Yes, ma'am. So I have a question. Well, okay. actually, first, you just said that was dope, and that just covers everything because you've <laughs> never said that on a call. And is he getting the award or the crown? We just got to know. No, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. He's getting an award-winning award because the information was dope. And I don't like, he, he crowned it. He crowned it because the crown. I told you the crown story the other day about uh, the, died, the guy got to heaven and everybody was wanting all these crowns. Hundreds and hundreds of crowns are on the stage. Uh, stage and there's a huge crown, huge crown. Everybody looked around and said, who's that crown? And they said, oh, there's Billy Graham on the third row. I bet that's for him. And all of a sudden, they called up Billy Graham and, they, and the Lord gave Billy, crown, Billy Graham the rigor crown. And everybody like, oh my God, who got the big crown? And they named the person nobody heard. And God gave him the biggest crown. Why? Because he was the one who witnessed to Billy Graham. Wow. wow. He touched Billy Graham and Billy Graham touched thousands of lives. Mr. William does the same thing. He's touching lives right now with the, with the information. He's touching lives right now with you. Are you staying focused? Who else are you going to put and help them stay focused? You know, at the beginning of the call, I was watching Mr. Mr. Brian Baker, and I noticed he has a lot of new, a lot of new his IBOs on here. What does that say about Mr. Brian Baker's leadership? It's growing. It's growing. Why? Because he's giving his people to get on these calls and get them focused because he wants them to win. We want every one of you to win. Every one of you to win. Mr. Dwight Williams is a philosopher of knowledge, yeah. and I'm telling you, the stuff he gave you today was so amazing. How many got more than three pages of notes today? How many of y'all just listening, just listening, but didn't write nothing down? 
you know, this stuff is so important. There you go, Ms. Ismail. You got to write it down, folks. I've got pages and pages, three pages of notes over here. Uh, start on the fourth page. But see, that's how you become a Yoda. That's how you become a Yoda, by staying focused. And mm, strong force is strong with this one. <laughs> you know, that's Mr. Williams. He's a Yoda. He's a Yoda. He's a Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's a Yoda. He's a Yoda. <laughs> and you're sitting there like a bump on a log, taking notes. Take notes. Because this information does not come through osmosis. You don't get this on every channel. You don't get this on most calls. You don't get any of this stuff. We are here to prepare you for the 21st century. And I, oh, God, 2021. And if you can't understand that, we are in a shift right now. The wealth is shifting right under your feet, and you can't see it. We want you to see it. We want you to be part of it. And we want anybody to take advantage of you. Folks, you got to get ready. You got to share the opportunity to more and more people. Because as the moratorium of rents is, is lifted, the moratorium of, of, of mortgage pay, Lord, it's going to be a floodgate opening up in 2021. And you're not even ready. You can't even see it because, like he said, the noise. I can care less who won. It's all the same thing. Don't you get it? Don't you understand it? It's, nothing's going to change. Neither one of them is going to change your life. Only you can do that. And that's what he's trying to tell you. Wake up. Take control of your life. There's no such thing as failure because God doesn't make junk. But you listen to the noise out there. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, nobody wants to sign up. Oh, they decided not to do a sin. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's from within going outward, folks. Do you know who you are when in here? That's what he's telling you. And you're listening to Stuff that you got no control over. All we can control is what's inside of us and what he gave us. You are great and you could accomplish senior vice president. Can we give Mr. White one more? Come on, come on. Even Yoda's over here clapping. Right, Yoda? Yes. Yeah, Yoda's over here clapping. <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. I'm trying to tell you, any questions for Mr. Dwight Williams? Come on, y'all. The Mr. most people Mr. Mr. Dwight are Williams. off today. Go yes, ahead, sir. Mr. Sir, uh, this is Julian in San Diego. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to tell you that I'm grateful for you and that the way the way you described how um, obviously from the good book, but the way you described how the body seeks the comforts and and, you know, one of the guys that we talk about a lot is David Goggins, who through his journey, he he figured that out in his body. I mean, the, the, the instruction manual said that, but he didn't have the manual at that time and he took his body through it. And people say, well, why don't you, why don't you remain civilized? He said, because if I allow my body to think I'm civilized, it won't allow me to reach my next goal. So the way you, the way you put that, I, I hope everyone got that because that, that was huge. But I just wanted to say I'm grateful for you for sharing that. And I appreciate you. All right. You're welcome. Thanks. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know what, Mr. W Mr. Williams, when you said that, it reminded me of me getting up at four in the morning, how I struggled it was in the beginning. And now every day my body wakes up at four. I'm out the door working out by 430. And it's so amazing how some people still struggle. But you got to, like you said, you got to take control of your body and not your body takes control of you. It dictate to you what you're going to do. Because that's where laziness come in. Our, because we sell it for it, we sell it for it. And now we're lazy rather than take control. Any other questions for Mr. White Williams real quickly? We've got a few more minutes. If anybody want to share <clears throat> a question or share what they got out of today's call, because sometimes even as leaders, it's good to give them recognition and what you learned and what you got. It makes it payday for us <clears throat> to let us know that our words weren't sane in vain. <clears throat> and that somebody got some out of it. Like Mr. See, that's why Mr. 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 Lewis is a regional director, almost RVP. He gets it. Any other question or comments? Mr. Thomas, what did you get? so one thing that Mr. Williams said that his mother always said, I am my greatest enemy. That just totally stuck because that's it's so true. That's totally true. There were so many truisms today. I don't know if everybody got uh, four or five of them. There were so many of them. There were so many truisms. Anybody else want to comment on what they got out of today?
man, you got so much talent on here. Mr. Quinn wants to come off his mic <clears throat> and share. Mr. Anthony Quinn, I think he's in Kentucky. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like yes, to say, sir. how you doing, brother? I would like to say it was, it's great to um, understand that he said there's opportunities in a challenge. So often, oftentimes we uh, we fail to realize that, you know, when the challenges come, that's the opportunity. So the challenges that we're going for, you know, that are going on in our lives, there's really an opportunity that awaits because of that challenge. So it's very important just because of the challenge, it means that's an opportunity. So we should realize that and, and take grasp of that and, uh, you know, look at it on a granular level and see the importance of that uh, and having us progress and move forward. So I want to uh, take time to thank Mr. Williams. and appreciate that, that, uh, that tidbit, that nugget. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Anthony Quinn. You're a dynamite young man. We appreciate you so much, my friend. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Sam Foster in Dallas. Yes, sir. Mr. Dwight, I want to personally say thank you, sir, because I know oftentimes when you come on this call, you have to often, um, of course, uh, get before the Lord and do your prayer and whatnot. And um, I know that's not always an easy task, especially when um, you have to uh, give out to so many people. But I want to say thank you because you've uh, actually encouraged me um, you, you definitely stay focused today. And um, I know that's not always easy, especially when you want to pour out uh, so many uh, words of wisdom. But I want to say thank you because um, you actually um, shifted, you know, something in my mentality because uh, yesterday I was kind of defeated and uh, felt discouraged because I had some things going on yesterday and uh, actually went to bed early. And that's not really not me. But uh, I want to appreciate you for... Uh, giving me the insight that I needed to uh, push forward this morning. So I just want to say thank you, sir. Well, you always do a great job. So I, I appreciate you for that. And God appreciate bless it. you. Appreciate it. Good morning. This is Natalie Parra. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can. Uh, Mr. William, thank you so much for all the calls that you do for us. It's very, very important and valuable that the people understand that even when they have the great vision, they can start with a few goals, you know, because sometimes the people get like, okay, I have to set up uh, 10 goals and I can achieve it. But if you start little by little, it doesn't matter that it's, it's small, it's big or, or medium, you can, you can just uh, get closer to your goal and get closer to your vision. And that's important that the people understand that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much for your, uh, for your inspiration today. And the one thing that I caught was, I am designed to dominate. You are, absolutely. <laughs> By design. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, God doesn't make junk. Thank you, Ms. Sensation. I think we got some hands. I think Pat Robinson and Dave Culver and Bill Howard. Ladies first. Yes, Mr. Williams. I appreciate it today and distractions is my biggest problem, you know, and you just have to stay focused and plugged in. <clears throat> just like you were saying, don't let your your uh, distractions overcome you, like being tired. When you know you're not tired, you have to push, push forward, you know, and I appreciate that. I read the Bible a lot also. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. The greatest information comes from the Bible. And you just have to stick with it. Thank you. You're welcome. Truth be told, distractions is all of our problems. The, the, the key as you progress, we just be, we get better at overcoming them. Um, yeah. that's, that's really what happens. But we all, it's, it's happening to all of us. Uh, interesting scripture that I, I quoted, I was in Bible Bowl a long time ago and I never forget this scripture. It says, is uh, no temptation is taking you than such as common to man. And it, it means that we're all dealing with things similar. 
So, because one of the things that'll happen is life will try to convince you that the situation that you're facing is greater than what everybody else is facing. It's not true. Everything, we're all challenged. And that's why it's important that we all work together because when one is down, the others can lift that person up. Uh, and so surround yourself by the people that, like Mr. Thomas says all the time, who are moving forward and they can help you get focused. I promise you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Dave Colbert, prof the professor. <laughs> it's muted. There we go. Great morning, um, Mr. Williams and Mr. Thomas. Um, thank you again for that. Um, I like the what you said is cut out the distractions and that really just resonated how you put in John 10.10 10, how the enemy still kill and destroy. And I realized it's like when you cut out the distractions and you, when you master your focus, that's where belief comes in. And when you have the belief, faith takes over and faith takes over fear. So I just want to thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Culver, he, he, remember he has no real power. Right. So he has to use things that cannot overpower us. So one of those is deception, misdirection. So absolutely. He, he help. he makes us do it to ourselves. I, yeah, so. I still remember the book Mr. Thomas referred several years ago, How Win the Devil. And I just, yeah. I just took that, I just took that out of my um my box. And I just thought it was like Mr. Thomas referred that book. So, that's you. an awesome book. That's <clears throat> you know what's kind of crazy <clears throat> and eerie <clears throat> when the eeriest tapes are are if I ever heard or CD is the, the that book on CD. <clears throat> excuse me. Because it's the eeriest feeling, like a devil. Like I don't know what a devil sounds, but I tell you what, if there ever was one, that tape is like, oh my god. And it, then it really resonates with me because he tells you all the cunning things he used to throw you off track, folks. And if you haven't read the book, read the book. Or if you haven't, get the listen to the listen to it. On Audible, it's, definitely. Uh, Audible is is an eerie thing. It yes. it have you living on your left shoulder and your right shoulder. Like who, who's that? <laughs> I'm they have it on YouTube as well. Yes. Yeah, out with the devil. I'm telling you, you got to listen to it. It's the, and he tells you these little secrets that he uses to throw you off. And it's so powerful. That's one of the most powerful uh, audios I've heard that's kind of frightening to make your hair you know, stand up because it's so eerie and real. It is real. Yeah. Mr. Thomas, I know you probably, have you read the screw tape letters? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Man, look, that Bible, B-I-B-L-E, stands for basic instruction before leaving earth. Everything you want to know is in that book. Matter of fact, it says in that book, if they don't want to hear what you got to say about ACN, knock the sand off your sandals and go to the next door. Come on. Yeah. Man, I don't get me, y'all don't, don't get me started. <laughs> we'll be in an hour or two. Don't get me started. <clears throat> I walk by it. I live, I'm telling you, <clears throat> there's so many nuggets of wisdom. Every motivational thing that you listen to is a derivative from that book, folks. There is nothing new under the sun. And I, if, if I can get y'all to understand that, <clears throat> it goes across every religion, bound, Buddha, Muhammad, all of it. But, it, but you don't, you got to understand it's all, it's all there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all there. It's a way of living. In a way, uh, if you can get what Mr. Dwight said, and here's what I would encourage you. I'm not going to beat anybody up today. I'm here to encourage you. I encourage you to go back and listen to this today over and over again, at least once or twice. I'm telling you, because there was so much nuggets that fell in, into place here. I want to make sure that you distract the, the minerals and the nuggets, the gold, the silver out of this teaching today and really understand what was said and then apply it to your life. You know, I, 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 my, my son was asking me, Daddy, how many books you read a month? I said about three or four. I'm an avid reader because leaders are readers. Go check, what's your library look like? If I, if I was to arrest you at your house <clears throat> for not having more than uh, 50 books, <clears throat> how many would go to jail? <clears throat> Think about it. How many of y'all would go to jail if I was to, to arrest you if you didn't have 50 books at your house? How many of y'all go to jail? So, and you want to be a leader and you want to make what kind of income and you want to have a group of how many people, but yet still you're not doing what the leaders of the leadership is doing. 
the one percent of the one percent. That's what we do. Why, when you go to the liquor store or the bar, why is the liquor the most expensive liquor on the higher shelf? It ain't meant for everybody. It ain't meant for everybody. They put the lower stuff, that little house wine here for everybody. That's for that's for that's for everybody. The high, don't you understand? The most expensive stuff's on the higher shelf. You got to reach for it. It ain't for everybody. And we're giving you nuggets that you could have to build you to where you need to be a, as an SVP. First thing Mr. Dwight Williams talked about is SVP. You got it in you. You're just walking in fear. You need to do the things you need to do and discipline yourself. You realize how hard it was for me to discipline myself and get to four in the morning? How many of y'all been in the Virgil's with me? Virgil Clunder's place. We get up four in the morning. Some of y'all never done that before. Take a walk and a run and then jump in a, his lake, ice cold lake right afterwards and then see all your toxins rise up to the water levels right over your head as you're looking around. See, y'all don't understand. There's a sacrifice. Your body says, no, 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 no. Who's that, Kevin Hart? No, 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 no. Your body says, no, but but you got to control the body. That's exactly what Mr. White, Dwight Williams talking about today. I challenge some of y'all get before with me. Oh, um, um. See, my body is unsubmissive Al Thomas, not the other way around. And once you guys catch what he said about that today, you'll start having a lot more control of a lot of things in your life. One is laziness. One is procrastination. One is letting it tell you what to do. I don't feel like it. That, it took control right there. I'm, I'm sorry. Next question. Anything else to Mr. Williams? I'm sorry. Because this stuff was, I highly advise you go look at it again. Some of y'all ain't working it anyway. You got nothing to do. But get on the phone and get some people on the call for tonight <clears throat> and also get people and talk to them about the opportunity. I think Mr. Howard, did you, did you have something? There we go. Now you should hear me. Yep. Okay. I just got unmuted. There we go. So the, the thing that he, that I heard Mr. Williams sneak in at the end, <clears throat> is about how we, you know, and it ties into what uh, Mr. Culver was saying about distractions is that a lot of us <clears throat> have all this stuff. We, we give up our power to our employers and think we're so busy that we don't do anything in the business because we're thinking we got to do it fast, fast, fast. And it's better to do it a little by little than doing nothing at all which is basically right back to what the compound effect is all saying about, which we've all had been recommended to read as well. Mm -hmm. That's a great book, actually. A really good book. Yeah. Absolutely, Mr. Bill Howard. Thank you. Anybody else? You know, we started off today with a Veterans Day, today's Veterans Day, and also in Canada, it's called Remembrance Day in Canada. We want to thank you. So we got one or two more, Miss Belize, Belinda Belize, up in Ohio. Yes, I just want to say this what, um, to Mr. Um, Mr. Dwight Williams. The greatest opportunity, maybe the, the greater the opportunity, the greater the challenge is to achieve. And I associate that with the Bible when it says that to, to whom much is given, much is required. And that just resonated with me. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. One of my favorite scriptures. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I have to honor that scripture because he, he reminds me daily how blessed I am. The more blessed you are, the more you got to give back. God, that's so important. Wow, that's so important. You got to give unconditionally. Miss Sensational in Florida. I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Thomas, for your diligence in putting mm -hmm. these webinars on every day. I'm a I'm an orphan, but I'm thankful that I'm able to chat, uh, tap into your uh, teachings every day. It's doing a lot for me. It's like I'm on a runway, and once I'm taking off and getting all of my impact inside, then I'm able to fly. And coming in and tapping into your trainings and all of the brilliance that you bring to us on a daily basis is much great, much uh, uh, appreciated because some of us in ACN don't have this. 
we have to come around and find it. And I'm just thankful that I was able to find you. You're very welcome, Sensation. You know what, my, I've always, and people always wonder why I've been at the top of two network marketing companies for 27 years is because I'm a giver. And some people, they're takers and they're taking and taking. They don't know how to give back to their team. They don't know how to give it openly with the open hand to give, no matter whose organization. I said, I don't care whose organization you're in. Just recently, the contest we're doing, I said, I don't care. As long as you're on my call, you're part of my family. See, we're all on the same ship called AC and going different levels, you know, uh, ET, uh, ETL, RD, are going the same direction. Here's what, the, because I'm a giver. I've always been that way. And I thank God for that because that's why I, that's where my blessings come from by being a giver open to everybody. Now, the beautiful thing is like this contest we got going. We got, ten, get, everybody gets vivid. 10 separate accounts from anybody. Not 10, one account, you got to get 10. No, we all throw it together and we'll have a drawing. We're going to give away iPods, uh, uh, was it uh, uh, Apple watches and all. Why? I open it up to everybody. I don't care. Look, the contest I've been doing with, with the giveaways, everybody on, on the hour, power hour on Mondays at 6 o'clock p.m. I give that stuff. I mean, and people wonder why I'm so, because some of you, you don't know how to give. You're just, help your organization, help everybody build. And it's a winning combination. God bless you. Thank you so much. Mr. Mills. Your phone's muted, sir. There Hello? you go. Yeah, you go. Hey, let me, sir, let me know. I'm, I'm speechless. Let me put it that way. And Mr. Williams, let me just say, when I see you, my hand will be extended to you. I mean, I just, I'm some, I don't know what to say. The only thing I can really do is just sit back and just take it all in, man. And I appreciate you. I appreciate this platform. Um, sometimes you don't know what you got until it's in front of you. So, Mr. Thomas, thank you for coaching me through a pandemic. It's a trip to me. Like this whole, who would have thought? My whole focus has just changed. So I just want to say I appreciate both of you. And what you get, I definitely will be going back to the channel. And just look, thank you. Um, just for even having that YouTube thing, uh, Mr. Um, Clemens, just for the, the whole bit, this whole thing is just awesome. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You're welcome, man. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Williams, no, thank you. You know, Mr. Williams, I have a lot of off camera conversations and like minds do think alike. Like minds do uh, hang out with each other and talk and, and, and share and, and learn from each other. And we hope that you all can learn from each other, not only learn from these calls, but I do this on tireless list. And I, I really want to say I cannot do any of this without Mr. Reed Clemens, because without him, I would not be where I'm at. And don't you understand, there's no such thing as a self-made millionaire, billionaire. Everybody needed somebody along the way to help them to get to that goal. And see, people don't follow money. They follow people with vision. And the Bible says without vision, people perish. And some people don't have a vision. Mr. Dwight Williams puts you on a course of having a vision for your goal for yourself. And don't let the company take you to their vision. You need to stay on track with your vision. You still got to work there. But when you get off, how many hours you put in a day in your vision, in your vision, in your vision? And see, without vision, people perish. We all know that scripture. But I'm trying to get you guys to understand. You have so much more in you, but you're not letting yourself go the route you need to go. Put that body under submission and get up. It, it Maybe not four. Get up an hour early and do some more with your business. Go to bed an hour later, but do something with your business. But carve that time out for you and your family. Carve it out. You know, the other day, my daughter and I, you know, I just wanted to surprise her, you know, because she's worked hard. She, she graduated and, and everything else. And I said, you know what? Now there's no jobs we all know so i figured out i'm gonna send her somewhere just to have a good time so we went back to boston a couple weeks ago but i'm gonna send her somewhere else this thanksgiving just because i can and and, and the blessing is because the more i give the more god gives me to, to help oh my god help other people now mr dwight williams he about ready to take off on another lecture in a minute and i could tell i can feel it coming it's because we don't want nothing but the best for you yeah. we want the best for you and if you just lay down your ego and lay down that pride and just soak up the information and then turn around and do something with it, like you said, Mr. Mills, what to do is go do what we just given you, what Mr. William just given you. Watch the blessings. Mr. Thomas? Yes, Mr. Payon in Japan. I just want to thank Mr. Mr. Williams. Um, I love what you said about um, you were trying to beat, a, beat Bill Gates to the 
one million dollars when you were very young and you switch your focus to help people i just really love that and i go back and listen to your to your um presentations they're amazing and also thank you mr thomas for helping uh, my wife and i here in japan we really really truly appreciate we found you you're a true blessing thank you very much you're welcome you're very welcome sir just just and what time is it there is it what one o'clock in the morning uh it's uh 306 306 in the morning so real we don't mind we take a nap or whatever but we're always here for because it's incredible. You're on every call, you and your lovely wife are on every call. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up, everybody, listen to this. How many would you put your body in a submission to get up at 3.06 in the morning to be on a call that's gonna bless your life? See, that's exactly what Mr. Williams is talking about. That's why I wanted him to tell you what time it was in Japan, because him and his wife are on every single call. And here we rather roll up. See, here's what happened to most people. We rather roll out we rather roll over than roll out. He's rolled out to be on this call that's gonna bless his business. See, there's a small amount of sacrifice for greatness. And it starts with making the first baby steps. It's taking your body under submission and doing the things you don't feel like doing. I don't feel like it. Who cares what you feel like? You go to work, you don't feel like going to do that either, but you still go. So why do you go for that little check? You know, they pay you just enough to stop you from quitting and you do just enough to stop them from firing you. And you think that's enough? Look around you. It's going to get worse in 2021. But I am not here to tell you about that. Don't take me for it. Watch it. Thank you so much, Mr. Payon. God bless you. Thank you. Who else want to comment? Well, I tell you what. I want to thank my dear friend for coming on and sharing um, I want to thank all you IBOs and uh, new persons for the first time on our calls. We're open up to everybody because I understand we all going to win, but we need the right leadership to help you get to understand what you need to do. And here's the crazy part. We all know, Ms. Caroline Baker, what we got to go do to make it happen for us and our family. So let's not lay back anymore. Let's get off our assets and go and do what we got to go do. Because you're going to be the, the you're going to be the Bill Gates for your family. You, but it takes you to set it in motion and follow through. I wasn't on top of 20, 27 years on top of two ML, MLMs for a reason. I, I, I'll just outwork me. I've told you that before. Just outwork me. And with that, Mr. Williams, give us a few words in closing, sir, because I know where is he still? Give us a few words in closing. I'm fired up. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go take another walk right now. I gotta go cool myself down. No, no, no. This this was really good, um, uh, and I, I appreciate the opportunities. This is a great team of people, guys. Um, uh, just remember, no fear. Think about it. It if if you shouldn't have fear, if you cannot fail, um, that means you're you're really invincible. There are, there are no limits for what you're capable of doing, none. And so if you, I promise you, if, if you feel like your life is limited, it's because you've limited it. So if you, if you, so dream the biggest dream, if SVP is what you need to do, go get it done. And don't take forever to get it done. Don't take 10 years or five years or two years, do it, get it done. Why? Because the only person that can limit you is you. You already know that. And I can prove it to you. I've already, I've shown you right there in our book that it's true. So all we got to do is do the things to, to counter that and go be the person we were created to be. So and with, with that, that sir, go thank ahead, you. So. Th with that, sir, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Folks, tomorrow morning, whoa, I'm not going to tell you about tomorrow morning, but on Friday, we have Mr. David Lowe will be joining us on Friday. Uh, and Friday, I'll be in Fresno with the RDs and hire for our leadership and 100 point uh, people in Fresno on Friday with 100 points in RDs and hire. My first trip out since uh, this situation. But you know what I'm saying? I, 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 
I can tell you what, I can stay home and build it right here from home. And, and so can you. Like I said, three weeks ago, I was in three different countries, five states in the United States. I was home for dinner and I never left my house. And, you know, some people look at it a bit as a negative. I take the positive out of it because that's a big positive right there. Folks, we want to show some love to Mr. Williams one more time. Because you, I tell you what, I appreciated this call today. I got three pages, almost four pages of notes. Thank you so much, sir. Folks, have a great, great Veterans Day. Remember Veterans Today. Remember to be go out and, and put a smile on somebody's face. And, and as well, don't let the fear out there. Bring, don't bring that home to your family. Don't bring that home to your family. It's right out of the pit of hell. You need to take control of what you think. And it starts right in here. So with that, sir, thank you so much. God bless you. One more time for Mr. Williams. God bless you all. Have a great day. We'll see you tonight.